this next little topic ties right in. Age leaves. That's that's what's going to get them. Like the, the the call practice. Yes, how they're calling, how they're messaging. That's going to get them hemmed up. And the second component here, the age leaves now being technically non-compliant. Uh, that's that's going to get them. That's another way to get them hemmed up. There's multiple layers here to get hemmed up. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, so age leaves. That's confirmed. Non-compliant. Is that as of January 25th, upcoming 25? That is correct. January 2025 is be that light switch. Remember. The mm-hmm. lead that you bought on January 26th, 2025 will be legal. But if you call it again the next day on January 27th, 2025, it is now illegal. Simple as that. Can you obtain a written consent through text? If you you reach that individual, say it's January 26th next year, you reach mm-hmm. that person. Because I remember prior written consent, I did a video on this, the ways that consent is obtained, you know, the they hand it to you. They can give you direct consent and they can, and that was face to face to give you their number. That was a consent measure. Unless they've changed this definition since I did the video. And then they can give you, uh, the, the express written consent, which by some means of sending them a message and then replying yes or something like that. Can you collect their consent on that first phone call? Uh, I mean, they're giving you consent anyways. I know the, the, the probability of them being the ones to report you is low when they're, they're communicating with you regularly, but I'm looking at TCPA. It doesn't care, right? So can, how can you log consent uh, after that lead form to continue? Yeah, so it's actually a really interesting question. So your question is like you're going to take a non-conforming aged lead and try to turn it into uh, Well, no, not really. I, only leads I work with, yes. Only leads I work with is compliance, uh, like consent, recorded and stored but i'm saying if there is an age lead from the past and they call them is can they somehow work up a new consent yeah as long as it's before january 27th of 2025 yes interesting uh but 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 as a a a vendor a lead vendor data vendor whatever supplier you want to call these these lead guys they can no longer sell them because consent was only given to that first individual and there's no way to resell it legally from january 26 forward right well they can sell it they can sell it all they want but if you but if you buy it it's worth it's worthless you just bought something that's not worth a penny you just can they get in trouble for selling it uh depends on their contract right they can't get in trouble with the fcc with the plaintiff's bar but if they sell something, their contract says, you know, it has to be a compliant lead and they sell a non-compliant lead, then the lead buyer could sue the lead seller. Um, but I mean, that's not uh... much of a risk, right? So it's the same problem that we have today where the incentives on the data broker are not to be compliant. It's, you know, the risk is not on them. The risk is on the lead buyer. It's, it's caveat emptor. Buyer beware, buddy. That you know, is weird. Do you think that would change? Because if if you're going to make your the product that somebody produces, you're going to make it non-compliant, but they can't get in trouble for continuing to generate non-compliance. How could they be missing the liability there? Oh, well, I mean, it's just like the gun manufacturers, right? In California, you're not allowed to have a huge banana clip, but you know what? The gun manufacturer can make all they want. And if you're dumb enough to buy it, you're the one that's in trouble, not the gun manufacturer. <sighs> that's how it is. And it's the same sort of thing, right? These guys are selling a product that is illegal. Uh, and, you know, in the, in the, in the dr- war on drugs, right? You go after the drug manufacturer, you go after the drug dealer. In this yeah. world, they're going after the drug user, right? You're going, they're wow. going after the lead buyer. And everybody else in the chain is safe. That's another analogy I'm going to have to hang on to. They're not going after the dealer. They're going after the user in this case. That's, what, that's exactly right. That's, that's the clo- To me, that's the closest analogy. And these, you know, these lead sellers, you know, they, they even analogize themselves, you know, to being drug dealers. I mean, they, they, they'll, they'll wink at it at, at some, in some of their content they put out, you know, like, oh, I got the good stuff. Like, I'm that's really right. Sell you something good. I mean, they really play into it so, to a certain degree. And it's truer than it should be, you know, uh, but the That's buyers have to be, you know, they have to not just be addicts, right? Edu- education, agent education is critical. That's what this podcast was done, why we did this. And this is going to have to keep moving forward uh, it, with, with more and more education because they're walking into something they don't know. And the lead vendors, the, it's the, the dirty lead vendors are, you know, they almost like they have a, a weird exemption now too. And then the ones that are not the ones that are doing consent practices as they should, they have to keep it recorded and readily available too, right? That consent no. has to be recorded and kept. How's that? Not, work? not anymore. The lead buyer has to have the possession of the record. Which so, would come from the lead generator though, right? Is that, right. So when okay. you're buying a lead, you can no longer rely on the lead seller to record and maintain. 
you as the lead buyer have to take possession of it and you have to maintain it. Of what form? Like hours, I'm going to take hours, in a, it sends the lead to the, the agent and it has in the column, did this person consent? And it's the answer they gave, yes. Of course, they, it's a mandatory consent, so it's always going to say yes. But what other forms of proof would be required for that agent to hang on to? Well, the truth is no one knows because it's a brand new, <laughs> brand new rule. But I would say you want to have a picture of the website. You want to have a, uh, you know some form of a data element that tells you exactly what the consumer saw and not just the content of the language. That matters, too. But if you're going to try to enforce it, you've got to have the entire picture of what it looked like for a court uh, to accept that this was a valid online web form submission. Uh, just like you'd want a scanned piece of paper mm-hmm. for the contract, right? If somebody signed and not just, you know, the, the language that was on the contract, you want to actually see the contract, right? That's it's right. The same thing with a web form submission. Uh, so you've got to, you know, either have your uh, lead seller provide you with that. Or, mm-hmm. of course, there's companies like Active Prospect and Jernia that have third party witness software that can actually give you a visual rendering of the entire web session where the consumer is like moving their mouse around and like entering information on the web. So you can actually see that. And that's actually something that is provided out there by these services. That's good. That, that's just super interesting. What, what about this next topic? Uh, live transfer. Same story. Same case. It's the same thing. They can't. They, they might be non-compliant or they might be compliant, depending on if the other <laughs> rules are followed. So, right. for instance, if you are, um, I mean, it's going to be very, very hard for an agent, right, to, to yeah. get a, a, tra- a valid transfer. Because, again, the consumer would have to sign up for a carrier, right? And then the caller would have to be calling essentially on behalf of the carrier to get the consumer on the line to transfer to you as the agent who could only sell the carrier, right? So it would have to be a complete alignment from the original creative all the way through to the carrier with everybody in between serving as just the go-between for the carrier. The end product would dictate even the marketing form. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's absolutely All the way, man. Do you think the plaintiff's bar would ever see it where that selling the services, like the financial service being the product, do you ever think they'll ever revise and catch and start seeing it that way instead. It's a, it's a, the courts are going to have to weigh in on that. Um, but the safer you can make yourself, the clearer you can make yourself, right? Yeah. As an agent that you're providing that service, that you're providing that advisory, and that is what the consumer is going to receive a phone call about, the better off you'll be. Awesome. You've just watched a segment of our interview with attorney Eric Troutman. We'll put another segment of this interview right over here. Really encourage that you watch this entire interview. We'll put that video right here. See you guys next time.